Express in simplest form. 1 half minus 4x over 1, 1 over x plus 3 over 2x. So this is what's called a compound fraction. It's when you have a fraction being added or subtracted with another fraction and then being divided by two more fractions that are being added or subtracted. So you have fractions within fractions. So the key is to remember that you can't add or subtract fractions unless they have a common denominator. So your first order of business should be to get a common denominator. So, and, and if possible, and it is the case here, you really want to have not only a common denominator in the numerator of the problem to where you can subtract these, but you also want to have a global common denominator. A common denominator is the same up here as it is down here in the denominator. So in this case, what would that be? Well, let's look at the denominators that we have. We have 2, x, x, and 2x. So the best common denominator would be 2x because that would contain all of the factors that we needed to contain. 2 can go into 2x, x can go into 2x, and obviously 2x can go into 2x. Another technique which I like and I think is useful in this case is rather than getting each of these fractions individually to have the same common denominator and then going ahead with the addition and subtraction, why not just multiply every fraction, 1, 2, 3, 4, all of them, by what the common denominator would be? And what that'll do is that'll cancel some of the things on the bottom and it'll just simplify the problem immensely right off the bat. So let's let's do that. We're going to multiply each of the terms by 2x. And I'm going to show this all out. And um, you may be able to do this in your head, but don't because it's better to see the cancellations and stop yourself from making a simple mistake. So I'm going to do 2x times a half minus 2x times 4 over x all over 2x times 1 over x plus 2x times 3 over 2x. Alright, so now let's see these things cancel. Here we have 2x times 1 over 2, right? So you can imagine that this is over 1, right? So you just multiply across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. The 2's are going to cancel, and you're going to end up with x times 1, which is x over 1. So that whole thing just becomes x. What about over here? We have 2x. You can imagine that that's over 1. So numerator times numerator, we're going to end up with 8x over 1 times x, which is x. So 8x over x is just 8. So this is minus 8. And then in the denominator, we have 2x times 1 over 1 times x. So that's going to be 2x over x, which is just 2. And then over here, the 2x, you might see this right away, the 2x cancels with the 2x. So it's 3 over 1, which is 3. But don't forget the plus sign, so we're adding 3. And x minus 8, we have to leave just the way it is. 2 plus 3, we can certainly do. So our final answer will be x minus 8 over 5. And that's it.